Hello and welcome to the first tutorial on the SharePoint chart web path. First of all we're going to insert a new chart into our SharePoint page. We can do that by clicking onto the insert ribbon, navigating to web part and under the lightning tools web parts category we can select the SharePoint chart web part. There's some other web parts related to the SharePoint chart which we'll be covering later on in a later video. Select the SharePoint chart web part and add that to a web part zone on your page. And with that web part on the page, we can click onto the drop down link in the top right hand corner and choose edit this chart. Once you're with inside the SharePoint chart dialog box, we can first of all select the data source that we're going to build the chart on. There's multiple different data sources available for the SharePoint chart web part. The first one being a SharePoint list, and that SharePoint list can be a list with inside the current site that we're in, or actually anywhere within the farm, so we can navigate to different sites, uh, different site collections, and even different web applications if we choose to. We can also build a chart on a Microsoft SQL Server database, and we need to have some information available, such as the name of the server, the name of the database that we're connecting to, and obviously the name of the table, view, or stored procedure that we want to connect to as well. The same applies to an Oracle database. We can connect to that as long as we're armed with the appropriate information. And we can also connect to a CSV file if we've got one of those available. Business Connectivity Services is also a supported data source type for the SharePoint chart web part. And with Business Connectivity Services, you can connect to multiple different external data sources such as SQL, OData, Oracle, ODBC data sources, and many, many more. And don't forget that our BCS Metaman tool helps you create the external content types for business connectivity services. Microsoft Excel is also an option, and you don't need to have Microsoft Excel services in order to be able to use the Microsoft Excel file option with inside the SharePoint chart web part. We can simply navigate to any Excel file that is stored inside a document library some somewhere in SharePoint. We've also got the web parts in the current page and we'll be demonstrating that in a later video where we can actually build a chart based on either a list view web part or also something like an external list web part or even something like our lightning conductor web part so we can actually roll up SharePoint list items from multiple different sites and different site collections and then build a chart upon that information. And finally, we've also got an ODBC data source, so we can provide a connection string in order to connect to uh, any uh, data source that supports ODBC, the Open Database Connectivity. So we're going to start off with a very simple chart and build on it from there in later videos. Uh, we're going to uh, navigate up to a Microsoft SQL Server database. So I'll select that as the option, and I'm going to tick the checkbox to uh, allow me to authenticate as the user that I'm logged into SharePoint as and I'm going to provide two bits of information the first one being the name of the server that I'm going to be connecting to and the second one being the name of the database that I want to connect to. Once we've provided that information we can click on to connect and in the drop-down we'll be able to select different tables so notice the, the tables that uh, we have access to inside that database. And we've also got views as well. So there's multiple different views in here that I could select. So rather than connecting to the uh, raw data inside the table, um, most of these views are queries. So we can go through and select one of these. So we've got things like the, uh, the sales within a particular year and so on. Rather than building a custom view, uh, you could also create your own custom SQL query as well. So through here, you can uh, you can go through and query the database and uh, use the results of that query to build your chart. So to keep things simple, we're going to go through and select a table. And the table that I'm going to choose here is going to be the customers table. So we have uh, the customers table selected. And one of the things I can do to make sure that I'm connected to the correct table and we're going to see the data that we want to see I can click onto the view data option and this will show me the data that we're going to be uh, getting back and therefore that's what we're going to be creating our chart on so notice we've got some information in here such as the customer ID uh, we have company names and their contact details and also the contact name and phone numbers and so on of people inside those organizations now this might seem like a strange type of table to connect to 
Um, but what we're going to do is basically build a chart that is going to show us how many customers we have within each country. So by clicking onto next we can go through and select the columns that we want to see. So if we're basing this on a country, of course we need to uh, make the country column available. And I also want to use the customer ID as well. Uh, since that's the primary key for this table, we can guarantee that every single customer inside our customers table is going to have a customer ID. And therefore I can use that column uh, to count. Um, therefore I can uh, find out the number of customer IDs per country. So when we click on to next we've also got the ability to filter the data. So it might be that I want to just obtain how many customers I have within the United States or how many customers I have um, throughout Europe or, or something along those lines. So I can filter out other data as well um, in here which is uh, useful and we can add um, filters on columns even if they're not included in the chart uh, so we can uh, yeah, exclude customers in London and, and so on if we wanted to look at what the number of customers that we deal with outside of London as, a, as an example there. Uh, so we can choose other columns we can provide the operator and we've also got uh, the ability to add multiple levels with ands and ors in here as well. As we choose next we can also group by the data. So at the moment you can see that my chart preview isn't exactly showing a chart um, because it's difficult to show a chart on just customer IDs and countries. So therefore what we're going to do is group by one of the columns and we're going to group by the country column in this particular example. And if we scroll down further you'll notice that I've got some choices therefore of what I can do with the other column. So here's the customer ID and there's some different functions that I can perform. So uh, the only one that makes sense for this scenario is the count function. So I'll select the count and we'll click on to apply. And by doing so, notice that we now have a chart preview on the right hand side and we can also see our data preview as well with inside the grid there. So we can see what data is um, being obtained and how it's being grouped and how that count function is working and we can uh, see the chart and how that's going to be displayed. So as we choose next, the uh, next section that we can look at is um, displaying just a, a subset of the records uh, returned. So we could show the top 10% of customers or we could show the top 10 records as an example. So if maybe we employed 100 salespeople just for argument's sake and uh, we wanted to show the top performing salespeople and their sales figures uh, that's something that we could do in here so we could connect to a uh, orders table of some sort show the employee ID do a count of the number of orders or, or some of the order value and uh, within here show the top 10 um, so we can uh, basically go through and select that if we choose next again we are into selecting the style of chart that we want to use so currently the uh, we've defaulted to a 2D column chart we can um, go across and select a 3D column chart uh, so that would uh, look like that uh, notice that we could also display pie charts and so on uh, so we get a pie chart on the page and this can be uh, refined a lot um, and we've also got pyramid charts and waterfall charts and so on and in some of the later videos we're going to jump into some more complicated charts we're going to uh, rather than look at the single series charts we're going to go to some multiple series charts uh, so we can uh, have multiple series displayed inside a line for example and we can also build up to uh, stacked charts and also combination charts and so on as well so we'll be exploring each of those options as we go through the different videos. Um, but for this one, we're just going to keep things simple. Um, let's uh, go with the 3D column chart. So we'll, uh, we'll apply that. And once again, I just want to point out that this is your actual chart. So what we don't have to do is just keep clicking finish and then thinking, no, that's not what I want. I have to go back into the wizard. Uh, we're refining the chart all of the time. And this is exactly how it's going to appear on the page. So when we choose next again, we can provide a chart title. So uh, in this chart title, I'm going to have the number 
of customers per country and we could have a subtitle if we choose so I could actually uh, take out the per country there and have that as a subtitle um, because maybe we're going to add some other charts onto this page that show the number of customers per region and things like that. You can also label your X and Y axis so uh, in here we could have uh, country as an example and just below that I could have the number of customers. Okay and uh, again we can preview that to see how that's going to appear on the page. Moving across to the series customization we can make some uh, modifications to things like the date and time display, um, the sort order, so do we want to sort by the number or do we want to sort by the country, um, so we can specify things like that and again notice that a lot of these options here are greyed out um, some of them make more sense in different types of charts rather than just a, a 3D uh, bar chart so um, things like the, the plot colour and the anchors and, and so on will, uh, will make more sense later on as we go through the different videos so um, we don't really make any changes there but let's click apply anyway and we'll go to uh, next uh, in here we can uh, select whether we want to show data labels and data values so as you look at the chart you'll notice that on the chart there we have some of the values actually showing um, so we can decide whether or not we want to show that so we can preview with and without um, personally I think it looks uh, better without um, but sometimes we want to show those exact figures on the chart as well uh, the data labels are as we hover over the chart so notice you can hover your mouse over any of the bars inside the chart and you'll see the uh, the series and the uh, value there so the country as well as the uh, the count of customers so again we can choose whether or not we want to show that um, we can also choose uh, different custom fonts and and so on inside that um, label as well you can uh, also do things like turn on shadows, change the background color of those and the, the border color etc and uh, likewise here for the data plot as well you can uh, make modifications to that. Now under the cosmetics link this is where you can change the uh, colors throughout the chart, you can change the, uh, the bar chart colors, you can change the background colors, you can change the border colors uh, so on and so forth. Um, so notice one of the things we've got a very gradual sort of gray canvas to the back of the chart um, and that might not fit my style with inside SharePoint so um, especially if you're, you're branded SharePoint so what we can do is uh, come into here and change the canvas color if we want to um, or we can just decide no, I don't want to show a canvas so we can click on to preview again and see what it's going to look like without the canvas. All of the margins and all of the border thicknesses and so on can also be changed as can fonts throughout the uh, throughout the chart uh, we can modify some of the settings for 3d charts specifically and we can also provide some custom branding as well if we want to so we'll apply those changes um, and just point out some other things as well so we've got uh, number formatting so you can choose where you want the thousand separators or decimal places and things like that in here uh, you can also change the axis so do we want to start at zero or do we want to start at a negative number and, and what have you that can also be shown in here um, you can add trend lines if you like so uh, so they can be added to your chart there'll be more on that a little bit later on um, and there's some other settings in here and uh, some of the chart messages are very useful to customize so if for example we were displaying a chart based on the number of orders received in a month um, and uh, here we are on the first day of the month maybe we don't have any sales yet so uh, what we could do is uh, simply just display a message to say uh, there are no sales data check back later on or something to that effect um, so we're giving the user some meaningful feedback when they hit a page inside SharePoint in a later video we're also going to look at the drill down and I really encourage you to look at the drill down it allows you to build dynamic charts so if we were displaying charts on um, sales again per quarter we could uh, allow users to be able to drill into the chart so they can see things like sales per month 
and sales per day or per week and, and so on. Under the dynamic filter option we can um, allow the users to be able to filter the data. So we did cover filtering the data with inside the chart configuration um, but not all of the users are going to be able to come in here and change the chart. You would need to have at least design permissions to the page in order to do that. Uh, what we can do though is allow users to be able to filter some data dynamically and that filter will only be applied to that user. And uh, here are all of the available columns so if I wanted to allow them to filter we could uh, for instance allow them to filter on the country column so we could apply that and they'll then see that filter option the final setting in here is the export settings so the export settings allow users to be able to print the chart they can also uh, bring that chart into Microsoft Excel and they can also uh, show the chart inside an image or a PDF as well so uh, simply by checking these options gives the users the ability to uh, export the chart. So we'll click on apply and uh, let's hit um, finish. And there we have it, our first chart. So uh, we'll click on to save and close. And uh, notice we get that nice dynamic view of the chart. So as we, uh, as we land on the page, the chart grows which gives some uh, some great feedback and uh, it makes a great visual addition to your SharePoint environment and um, as I mentioned later on we'll have a look at how we can drill down into some of these charts by clicking it um, and we've also got the uh, filter options in here as well so uh, yeah, if we wanted to take for example the country field which is the only one that we can filter on because that's what I uh, made available and we'll say is not equal to USA we don't want to include that um, so we can click on to preview and that would show the chart without the USA included we can therefore hit apply and, uh, and see our chart without that and so on and like I say by doing that you're not affecting any of the user that's only going to affect you okay so uh, check back have a look at some uh, later tutorials um, and uh, you'll see some of the more advanced options of the SharePoint chart web part